heart of the children to the fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. So we're on point number four under the uh, two witnesses. Is Elijah really Elijah? That's where we are right now. And so he specifically says that before the second coming, God says, I'm going to send you Elijah. And the purpose is turning the heart of the fathers to the children, the heart of the children to the fathers, uh, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. In other words, basically what it's saying is that Elijah is going to come and his duty is to build up a believing remnant so that they may be saved and rather, be, rather than being cursed uh, with the earth and passing away and going to the lake of fire, they are going to come into the kingdom. So God promises here he will send Elijah. So that's your fill in the blank there. The Malachi 4 verses 5 through 6 says, God will send Elijah before Jesus' second coming. So that's a pretty strong argument that Elijah will be one of the two witnesses. Now if we go over to Matthew chapter 11, uh, when Jesus was on earth, he specifically talks about Elijah a couple of times. Israel, even though they were apostate, they knew the Old Testament and they knew that prophecy there in Malachi chapter 4, that Elijah would come before the, before the second coming there of Christ. John the Baptist and Jesus are both saying that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. So if they're saying it's at hand, it's about time for the kingdom to be brought in. And Elijah's, you know, in other words, the time of Elijah's coming is got to be at hand as well. So in Matthew 11, there's this question, uh, John the Baptist is beheaded. And uh, in verse 13, we're told there, um, Matthew 11, verse 13, this is the Lord Jesus Christ speaking to the disciples and he says, For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John, meaning John the Baptist. Now notice what he says in verse 14. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, or Elijah, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. But whereunto shall I liken this generation? It is like unto children sitting in the markets and calling unto their fellows, and saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, He hath a devil. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they said, Behold, a man gluttonous and a wine-bibber, a friend of publicans and sinners, but wisdom is justified of her children. So you're filling the blank there, is that Matthew 11 says that if Israel would hear, John the Baptist was Elijah. So Malachi 4 says Elijah is going to come before the second coming of Christ. And Jesus said there in Matthew 11, 4, 14, Matthew 11, 14, If you will receive it, this, referring to John the Baptist, is Elias, which was for to come. So he specifically identifies and says John the Baptist is Elijah, but the condition is if you will receive it. Now the question is receive what? And the answer is the kingdom of heaven. If they are willing to believe the gospel of the kingdom, repent and be baptized for the remission of sins, then Jesus says, John the Baptist, he is the fulfillment of Malachi chapter 4, which tells you that even though Malachi 4 says Elijah will come before the second coming of Christ, according to Matthew 11, Elijah, physically the guy who was back in 1st and 2nd Kings, doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be him to fulfill this verse. It can, in this case, be John the Baptist. If you go over to Matthew chapter 17, Matthew 17, starting in verse 9, the disciples bring up the question of Elijah coming, the prophecy in Malachi chapter 4. This is after the transfiguration. We read that earlier about how they saw Elijah and Moses, Moses there on the temple, on the mount with Jesus. And so they're thinking about Elijah, they're thinking about that prophecy, and they ask the question here in Matthew 17 and verse 9, it says, And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, Why then say the scribes that Elias must first come? Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, 
but have done unto him whatsoever they listed, likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So we've got two verses here in the book of Matthew which I, where Jesus identifies John the Baptist as being that fulfillment of Elias. If they would receive the kingdom, he is Elijah. Matthew 17 says, Elijah has come already. So it tells you that even though the prophecy says that Elijah is going to come before the second coming of Christ, it doesn't necessarily have to be the Elijah that we saw back in First and Second Kings. Uh, the answer to this is over in Luke chapter 1. Because you'll say, well, you know, God says Elijah's coming. Now is he changing his mind? Because he's saying John the Baptist is Elijah. Well, we know he's a different guy. He's not Elijah. He's a different guy. If you go over to Luke chapter 1 and verse 17, this is a prophecy of when John the Baptist is going to be born, before he is born, there's this prophecy that goes to his parents here about what John the Baptist will be, you know, who this man is. He's a man, he's really chosen of God, you can see, because the vision of him coming is given to Zechariah in the temple. It wasn't something that happened of a physical nature, but rather this is a really God who is bringing about this anointed child. And it says there in Luke chapter 1, verse 17, referring to John the Baptist, he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Uh, you've got part of that quote there, the last part of that verse is a quote of Malachi chapter 4 verse 6. And notice Malachi 4 says, I'm going to send Elijah. This here says, that John the Baptist is going in the spirit and power of Elijah. So you're filling the blank there is that Luke 1.17 says John the Baptist came in the spirit and power of Elijah. He came in the spirit and power of Elijah. So even though Malachi chapter 4 specifically identifies Elijah is going to be sent before the second coming, from these scriptures we see that John the Baptist was spent in the, sent in the spirit and power of Elijah and if the people of Israel would have received the kingdom, they would have repented and been water baptized for the remission of their sins, then John the Baptist would have been the fulfillment of Malachi chapter 4. He would have been Elijah because he came in the spirit and power of Elijah. Now to confuse you even more, let's go over to John chapter 1 because when John the Baptist is speaking to Israel in John chapter 1, uh, he says something different than what Jesus said. In John chapter 1, starting in verse 19, John the Baptist out in the wilderness preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and the Pharisees come out there to meet him. It says there in John 1 19, this is the record of John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? So they're asking him the question, Are you the fulfillment of Malachi chapter 4? Are you Elijah? Come back. And he saith, I am not. Art thou that prophet? That's a prophet uh, referred to in the book of Deuteronomy that Jesus Christ happens to be. He said, he answered, No. Then said they unto him, Who art thou? That we may give an answer to them that sent us. What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. So your final fill in the blank is that John 1.21 says that John the Baptist is not Elijah. He is not Elijah. So basically, to put it all together, you've got the prophecy in Malachi 4 saying Elijah would come before the second coming. Jesus says John the Baptist would have been Elijah if they accepted the kingdom, but because they didn't, that prophecy has not been fulfilled and Elijah's coming is still future. So, what I would say in, in closing, in conclusion, so who are the two witnesses? If it has to be people who are in Scripture, your strongest argument is Elijah and Moses just because the things that the two witnesses do in Revelation 11 are similar to what Elijah and Moses did on earth. But it seems to indicate that really... 
Elijah and Moses will not come back, that it will probably be people who come in the spirit and power of them. That's what Jesus said John the Baptist would have been, fulfilling that prophecy. And so I think it's very likely that the two witnesses are people that we don't know. They will come in the spirit and power of Elijah and Moses because they'll do things that Elijah and Moses did. But they won't actually be Elijah and Moses who lived in the Old Testament. And the reason I say that also is, uh, you know, think of think of Elijah and Moses. And in fact, let's go. We'll we'll close with uh, Hebrews chapter eleven. Look at this passage. If you try to put yourself in the shoes of Moses and Elijah, or any Old Testament saint, anybody who has had faith in God, um, anybody according to Second Timothy three twelve, those who will live godly shall suffer persecution. And we see here in Hebrews 11 uh, that the people who did have faith in God in the Old Testament did receive persecution. Uh, look in verse 36. Uh, Hebrews 11 and verse 36. Referring to these people of faith, it said, Others had trial of cruel mockings, scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned, they were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. Uh, that's what Mo Moses spent 40 years bringing 2 million people through the wilderness who were completely in unbelief as far as believing God. He had to deal with a bunch of he, they called them the children of Israel, two million people who did not believe God. Moses had a lot of tough times with those Israelites. Elijah, the same thing. He was going against the prophets of Baal. He felt like he was the only one standing up. All of them had a very troubled time in the earth because they trusted in God. Both of them have been, have already received their reward. They've been in the New Jerusalem since Jesus' resurrection 2,000 years ago. Um, they've already received the reward. They're gone on. The world was not worthy of them, according to Hebrews 11.38. So picture you are Elijah or Moses, and think about that. You've, been, you've gone through a terrible time on earth. Now you've, you're in paradise with God. Everything's been great for the last 2,000 years. And then God comes over to you and says, I got one more job for you to do. Go back down to those people on earth. They're going to try to kill you, and they're going to try to get rid of you, and, but you're going to try to save them. Elijah and Moses, they've already got their reward. They've already received their rest. They don't want to go back to earth. Why would they want to do that? I think that God is going to raise up two new people um, because Elijah and Moses have already suffered enough as we read their accounts in the Old Testament. So my opinion, and again, this is my opinion, he could send Elijah and Moses if he wanted to, but in my opinion, um, God is going to send, the two witnesses are going to be two people who, they will be physical Jews, who aren't in the Bible, and they're just going to be people who believe, they're called by God, and they stand there, and they're going to be in the spirit and power of Elijah and Moses there in front of the temple. So uh, with that, let's close with a word of prayer. Uh, dear Lord, I thank you for your word. I thank you for your grace that even in these times, the tribulation that you would send to people who would build up that believing remnant. And I pray, Lord, that in this current dispensation of grace that we would recognize the grace extended to us. We would trust in the blood of your Son as atonement for our sins so that we may have eternal life. And then we go on from there, continuing to trust in his shed blood so that we, we may walk in the Spirit. We thank you for that in Jesus' name. Amen. Yeah, who, who would want to go from, well, I mean, Jesus.